Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Knowledge Hub session. Um, this week, we are back with a very interesting and different topic for the Knowledge Hub session. That's how do you actually build an aircraft? Um, a lot of the uh, modeling that we have uh, as a part of uh, Atal Innovation Mission focuses on aerospace, it focuses on drones. But so far, we haven't explored the territory of actually the planes that we use um, from traveling across country and um, not just building the planes that fly people, but planes that you can try at home to understand aerodynamics, to understand what goes into um, building good planes in terms of design. So for that, today we have a mentor of change from the state of Karnataka, Mr. Bharat. Um, he will be walking you through um, some the principles, the foundation principles that go into building airplanes. And then also take you through a quick case study of how you can model this plane right um, at home as well. So without further ado, sir, over to you. Uh, hi, uh, very good morning, everyone. I wish I could uh, see you guys, but unfortunately, I don't think... Uh, uh, is that possible, Varya? Because uh, it's quite challenging. Uh, the it, it wouldn't be possible to see uh, the participants for that. Okay, that's that's yeah. that sounds okay. Okay, hi, uh, very good morning. Uh, my name is Bharat, and uh, I'm from an organization called as Young Innovators. Uh, we are an educational uh, services company, okay, which cater to various uh, hands-on activities and uh, exploratory-based learning methods. So that's about it. Now, uh, coming to today's talk. Uh, so today's talk is all about aircrafts and uh, how to build an aircraft and various other things. The main agenda for me to talk about uh, this uh, specific uh, event or specific topic was, uh, I see most of the Atal uh, labs are uh, having gliders or having drones and various other things, but all these things are either ready-made or it's in the form of a kit. But uh, unlike uh, the robotics or unlike the other uh, subjects which has been explored or experimented more, aeromodeling is one such subject, I might be wrong again, okay, one such subject which is not being uh, experimented uh, well in these labs. Okay, so that is one of the main reasons why I picked up this topic uh, and I wanted to emphasize on how to start or how to build an aircraft or how to have a career in the aircraft or what are the processes which goes behind making an aircraft. And as the tinkering lab facilitators or users of the Atal Tinkering Lab, how you can start uh, the first and the foremost process of uh, uh, making a aircraft or uh, in the aero modeling. Okay, so to start with, okay, uh, I would uh, <coughs> uh, start the session uh, with the screen sharing. Uh, yes, yeah. I hope uh, everyone can. I hope everyone can see this. Share the screen. If any, at any point, anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. And I'll keep reading out, uh, reading the questions out for sir. Thank Perfect. you. Yeah, Perfect. Yes, screen is visible. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now, uh, what goes behind building of an aircraft? Now, lot of things goes be uh, goes behind building of an aircraft. Uh, it can be biomimic, or it can be technical, it can be engine related, or it can be as simple as a small nut. From the smallest of the smallest nut to the biggest engine or the biggest plane itself. Okay. There is a lot of things which goes behind constructing and making of an aircraft. Okay, and it's not like okay tomorrow you have to make an aircraft and today you will start uh, uh, taking an aluminium sheet or an uh, alloy or anything and start building one. It's not like that. So there's a lot of process which goes behind making of an aircraft. Now uh, again, every object or every subject comes with a history of its own. Now the same history. If you have to go behind, uh, usually the answer which I get when I ask uh, who exactly, where exactly did the uh, plane started, everyone say it is Wright Brothers. Of course, it is Wright Brothers, but uh, he, they were the one who took off from the ground. But uh, the aircrafts and the aero modeling or the aviation didn't start then. It was way, way, way before even Wright Brothers were even born. 
okay it dates back to dc now uh, again uh, there are couple of on record uh, events and couple of off record events so i will start with the uh, again it's an off record event now uh, this is a story which uh, dates back uh, uh, where two people the son and the father which are Icar icarus and the deidas they were locked inside a prison in an island and uh, icarus was a candle maker right so he actually made feathers okay again it is off record it is a story which i read in one of the book and i wanted to share it with you guys so it is an off record statement i never told you guys you never heard about it okay so uh, icarus and daedalus were the two who were the first uh, parent and son uh, pairing to fly to build a wing and to fly and uh, this was made of wax so this is how we go back to the ancients of uh, aircrafts but uh, the on record are these two in uh, 4th july 19, uh, 1783 okay uh, somewhere in uh, the scandinavian countries they built a first hot air balloon and they made a goat to sit inside that hot air balloon okay and they flew the hot air balloon up in the air now of course it, this is an aircraft but this is not an aeroplane okay and same thing with the hydrogen balloon right so the first hot air balloon and the first hydrogen balloons were the first initial stages of the steps or the first steps in the field of aviation right but the pioneer okay in aviation or the person who inspired even the right brothers or you can call even call the master of the right brothers was sir otto elianta okay he was the first person okay who made more than 2000 i repeat again more than 2000 glides solo glides okay and uh, most of them don't know about this uh, great person so he was the pioneer who actually started with the aviation okay his name is sir otto elianta he actually what he used to do was he used to build huge uh, gliders which as you can see in the image okay he used to climb up the mountain and he used to glide down from the uh, mountain and he has done more than uh, 150 to 200 different designs of aircrafts okay and the image that you are seeing is actually the real image of uh, sir otto and his glider gliding down from the uh, hill now uh, the question comes is uh, usually when i tell about this then the students ask why exactly sir otto was not called the uh, father of aviation of course uh why is yes, that because nice question on this why is he not famous then <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, again i don't want to talk about the political issues okay but uh, if i go back otto was not called as the father of aviation or the father of uh, aircrafts because he never generated lift his models or his uh, engineering structures or his designs never could generate lift it could only glide down from a certain height okay so uh, so right brothers were the first uh, people who actually successfully lifted uh, the generated lift and thrust and lifted from the ground okay so that in aviation terminology which is called as the uh, lift generation uh, thing and that is how a successful flight can be achieved okay whereas otto was the person who could just glide down from a certain height okay so but otto was the person who inspired the right brothers okay now uh, we all know that uh, first december uh, sir december 17 1903 was the uh, major huge event where the right brothers took off see if you see this model this is the model where right brothers took off from the ground okay but before that it was in the year 1900 they had one model which they made they used to tie to the horses and they used to run at a very high speed okay and they used to generate thrust and lift and the model used to go up 
followed by which in the year 1901 they made certain adjustments they increased the wingspan and other things and 1902 they came up with something called as elevators and rudders because in this aircraft they never could steer the plane to the left or to the right okay they could only generate lift okay depending on the speed at which the horse goes and after a certain height they used to tumble down but in only in the year 1902 they added uh, they reduced the size of the vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer so if you see here usually the plane okay now usually in the plane given any given plane okay there are uh, two stabilizers if you see this this is one vertical stabilizer and the one is horizontal stabilizer combination of these two is what makes the plane stable makes the plane steer to the left right pitch up or pitch down okay and uh, usually this will be on the tail end of any given aircraft but in the right brothers aircraft you see the device okay or the control surface is what you can call is one is in the front that is the horizontal stabilizer is in the front of the aircraft and the vertical stabilizer is behind the aircraft so uh, we had actually made one similar model here to demonstrate you guys so this is actually a replica of the right with this model to understand better i broke one part okay so to understand even better i have made it completely skeleton in shape okay so as you can see here this is one upper wing and one lower wing and the uh, one of the two right brothers used to sit in the carriage in the center so they used to sit here okay and they used to control the entire aircraft and this is the okay this part is the horizontal stabilizer which turns up and down like this see it can move up and down okay this combination of this motion makes the aircraft pitch up and pitch down so when this goes down okay the behind portion of the aircraft turn goes up and it comes down and the opposite if you do that oppositely the aircraft will go up and this is similar principle and in the front okay you find this device okay and this device can also turn left and right okay so by steering the plane left right and up down in the year uh, 1903 and december 17 right brothers were able to achieve the first flight for a total of 13 seconds okay and that is where the aviation started the uh, the complete era of aviation started okay but uh, but yes uh, it was not used much but uh, only in the world war it started growing in the peak okay so now why in the world war the aviation industry grew to a maximum peak okay is because the terrains the conditions and the targets were quite challenging when the soldiers were in the air and unlike now uh, the uh, planes are not uh, fitted with the war machines or the war heads okay the pilots used to have pistols in their hand and while flying they used to aim at the soldiers on the ground or at their side and they used to shoot it so this is how in the earlier stages okay uh, the uh, soldiers used to fly uh, fight wars using aircrafts okay this is the very first stage so they never used they never had the advantage of the warheads okay like now we have the warheads we have the missiles we have the heat seekers we have uh, mid air missiles we have the ground to air missiles we have the air to ground missiles we have uh, guided missiles we have the non guided missiles so we have various types of missiles which are there now but unfortunately during the olden era or the the first era of the aircraft the people used to sit exactly on the cockpit so if you see here okay there is a gun like structure can i have a different model okay there is a gun like structure okay the person used to stand here and used to aim at people and fire okay so that is how the thing started in the during the first world war 
and uh, during the second world war okay we had huge i mean to say huge uh, inventions in the field of aviation why it was very easy okay and uh, to attack the soldiers and it was quite challenging to fight them in the air okay so and the escape routes were quite huge and the they were huge success ratios when it when the war was fought in the mid air because of the using the aircrafts now that is when where we had this v series engines uh, which started we have the jet engine started towards the end of the world war and post uh, world war 2 where we had the birth of the supersonic aircrafts and post invention of uh, v series engine is where the aircrafts were allowed to commercial uh, services okay earlier yes we had commercial services but it was very expensive because uh, the type of fuel or the type of lift which was generated were because of the helium balloon or the hot air balloon okay and uh, the speed at which uh, people used to travel or the aircraft was traveling was very 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 slow but only because of the v series engine okay yeah again i was what i was saying was this okay so it was quite easy for the people to uh, attack the uh, opposite uh, team or opposite uh, country and uh, huge wars were won and one simple example was the hiroshima and nagasaki uh, which everyone knows and uh, this is the engine which i'm talking about this is the first v uh, piston engine v8 piston engine which revolutionized the complete aircraft okay and post invention of this piston aircraft is where we had the various commercial aircrafts or various acrobatic aircrafts or various aircrafts which were designed which even and it started everywhere in the world it was not like okay one nation was building it and was circulating and other nation was just uh, doing it no it spread across the globe okay and the parts were spread is it's like that okay for example if a plane is made it's not like the entire parts of the aircraft were made in one single country no the landing gear is made by one country the windshields are made in one country the aluminum foil which goes around are made in one country and the propellers are made in one country so forget it the seats which you sit and the toilet seats the combustion system the prongs the pressures the nuts bolts everything the doors making a do- imagine making a door is actually not a simple task okay making a door of aircraft is actually a huge engineering okay which is made by a different organization so finally they put all together in one stage and assemble it to make a simple aircraft and as i said this was the first jet engine aircraft okay we have also have one uh, in hal called as marut okay the marut uh, was the first uh, we have if you go and check in the museum okay we, you can see a similar kind of uh, cross section which has been kept there okay that is also a jet engine and uh, it is an indigenous jet engine which is made by indians okay now again then we had the supersonic uh, jet aircraft which i want don't want to discuss more in detail and as i said post world war 2 we had the commercial aircrafts which started okay but uh, if i look okay uh, if i go back now uh, where do we stand uh, in just over 100 years uh, from the beginning of the aviation the aviation industry was the fastest or the industry which has seen the highest growth okay and uh, now we have it was a record saying that uh, the roads are no longer safer because every now and then there are accidents okay the seas are not that safe either but the aviation industry is also one of the safest industry which is been seen why because there's too much of r&d which goes behind it too much of safety precautions which goes behind it and various parameters are considered before even starting or before even taking the plane on the runway okay the checks the measures and before even uh, launching it to the commercial segment the amount of tests which it goes okay 
for example uh, if uh, uh, okay to help you to tell you guys more in uh, easier way if a bike if you guys designed a bike and if you say that if you it can go easily at 100 km per hour the testing in testing the bikes are pushed to 150 160 km per hour in a rugged situation they add more weight they test it to the maximum uh, limit test it to its maximum limit and if the, and they will make sure that it is broken into pieces okay to test its uh, credibility and to check whether how much can a torture does a vessel take and the same thing happens to the uh, aircraft also okay and that is one of the and because of these rigorous tests okay the aviation industry is one of the safest industry uh, in the current scenario and uh, from the history okay where uh, the flight could only be achieved about 13 seconds that is the right for this could only achieve 13 seconds of flight we have come to a position where the rockets or the spacecrafts are launched wherein it's called as the they take a huge commercial aircraft they mount the spacecraft on the commercial aircraft they go to an extremely high altitude and from there okay it's called as mid-air launch from there they launch the spacecraft okay so from now earlier uh, were the days where we used to launch the aircrafts from the ground but now we have we have moved we have come to an era or we have reached a, a technological barrier where we have the aircraft which can be mounted on a one more aircraft and it can be launched in the midair and the top aircraft which is also a space aircraft or very simple like you have your uh, space shuttles okay so uh, you you will not be shocked or i will not be shocked uh, in future coming days if a space shuttle will be launched which is mounted on any of the big uh, commercial aircrafts and it goes and then it launches right so it happens just like this so for example can i have one again and can i have one smaller one? so we will use one of these aircrafts as the mother aircraft and my pen over here is the uh, spacecraft which has to be launched into the space so this is how it is either it is mounted below it is called as the belly mount okay usually the aircrafts are mounted on top okay or it can be mounted on below so based on the requirements and based on other parameters so once it is mounted below and uh, okay, thank you so uh, this is the baby so color differentiation is easy so we will either mount it on top or mount it on the below based on the conditions okay once we mount it on top this plane the mother plane goes high up in the air and reaches to a certain height it can be an ionosphere or a stratosphere so based on the limit of the aircraft and from there the spacecraft which is mounted on the aircraft is launched okay either it is launched from below just like a missile or it is launched from above using its own propulsion system so in this you could have asked what, why exactly is this uh, required okay first and foremost efficiency okay to launch a spacecraft in the air in the air too much of propulsion gases or too much of uh, uh, costing which goes behind in the making of the uh, rocket or in launching of the aircraft and there are various other things which goes behind commercials uh, goes behind it because of this okay it's very easy you don't need a dedicated launch pad you don't need a dedicated uh, space you don't need anything uh, dedicated you can just mount it on top of it and you can just launch in the air okay so this is how uh, this is where we have come from now before going to how the design design evolved and how you guys can participate okay i will uh, take the questions right i think there are some 10 questions here okay uh, sir can you take the weight okay saman can you explain what exactly do you mean by this uh, varya can you explain me 
Mm, I'm not sure we'll have to. I think wait for um, them. Okay. Uh, I okay. Sampuri Sudarsh Sudanam. Okay. Bimanika Shastri, the oldest book of aviation, records the design and uh, working of many types of flying objects. Yes, of course, uh, Vaimanika Shastri, uh, also called as the Anikal Vaimanika Shastri, uh, as we all know, okay, was uh, is now uh, in the uh, media saying that he was uh, even uh, was a person even before uh, he could uh, do the flying of an aircraft, making her her own daughter sit inside the hot air balloon and make it fly. So that is one of the uh, thing or the kite was one of the thing, but uh, I don't know. Uh, we don't have any visual records, photographs or documentation. So unfortunately we can't prove it. So that is a uh, thing. And uh, flu and second one says Shivkar Bahuta the flu even before Wright Brothers. Okay, I think this is a continuation of Vaimanika Shastri, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Yeah, there's one on uh, why do aircrafts need so much of maintenance? Okay, why do aircraft need so much of maintenance? Very simple. The aircraft is one of the, okay, for example, if you take a bike, okay, and it is going on the road, you can immediately, because of any technical deficiencies or anything, or any technical glitches, you can stop uh, the uh, bike or your bicycle or anything in the mid air, uh, in the on the road, anywhere that you want, okay, or any time that you want. But unfortunately, and the environmental conditions where you ride your bike, apart from the bad roads, okay, and apart from the bad drivers, okay, you will not be having any huge variation in the uh, external parameters. But an aircraft actually flies, okay, from an average temperature of 21 degrees to 25 degrees to, and it goes as it gains height, a commercial aircraft's external temperature reaches minus 15 degrees to minus 80 degrees, okay. So, in a fraction of a couple of minutes, okay, the variation of temperature is huge, it is very huge. And so much amount of static energy is being generated in such a way that you have to make sure and because of static energy, there are high chances of the fuel being ignited. So that is one thing. And second thing is a small rupture in the window on your car doesn't make any difference when you're driving the car. But a small rupture in the windshield or in the wind or even in the surface of the aircraft can make huge difference. It can break the entire plane into two pieces because of the internal pressure difference and the external pressure difference. You guys forgot that on the land, okay, uh, where we stand on the sea level, the temperature, if the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm and as we climb up and up and up as we gain the altitude, the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure starts decreasing and that is one of the main reasons why the helium balloons couldn't gain too much of height because once the helium balloon or hot air balloon reached a certain height, then they started expanding. They started expanding beyond their elasticity. For example, if you take a helium balloon, measure the diameter of a helium balloon on the sea level. And if you say it is some 10 centimeters in diameter, and if you let it go, as the helium balloon rises up and gains altitude and reaches a certain height, and if over there, if you measure, there will be an increase in the size of the helium balloon because the, uh, what do you say, the atmospheric pressure is not much, okay, when compared to the sea level, okay. As you go high, the atmospheric pressure reduces and the variation in the shape can be observed. Now, the same thing can be observed even in the aircrafts also. But unfortunately, because of the rigid structures, okay, there is no variation in the size of it. But because of the turbulence, if you have seen, there will be a wobbling effect of the wind, okay. A wind travel almost one meter towards the tip, okay. So if this is, if this is the entire plane, okay, if I take this as a reference, this almost travels about a meter when this is on the plane. So, 
and most of the fuel and everything is carried in the wings okay so they have to do leak test they have to do uh, friction test they have to do static charge test they have to do micro test and they have to do macro tests so all these parameters are very much uh, required and very much important before even the flight could gain or could even go up on the runway okay i hope i cleared my answer okay and uh, but sir you said it uh, took only 13 seconds flight so how did they used in world war okay how did they world war or how did they use in world war i think that is the question okay see uh, that is where it started i never said they used the same thing following which they went ahead and they started building an improvised models okay so if i have to if you have if you can just search in google or anything right brothers aircrafts uh, you can use world war 1 right brothers aircraft okay you get various such aircrafts and uh, name the first jet engine okay uh, now if you see this image okay you see this okay i did i do something okay uh, is the screen coming to you guys yeah yeah it's visible okay because for me it is not visible ha huh, okay so if you see this aircraft this was the first jet engine uh, aircraft called as the v8 engine or the uh, no, i'll go back here how do i go back in the side i can't see anything okay you see this this is the piston engine which was designed by the rolls royce okay this was the first piston engine and followed by this this was the first jet engine uh, uh, when we talk about india uh, we have the maruti and then we, when we talk about the global we had boeing which had made one of the first uh, jet engines which is still been used in couple of the low uh, and uh, aircrafts okay and i have this arjun who asked one question sir i have a question why is that the blades in the back of the engine spin the fan in front uh, okay gavaria uh, can you read this for me please i think he is talking about the spinning of the blades um, of the back engine and in the front and how do they spin this okay uh, now uh, one thing you have to understand uh, mm -hmm. the plane works uh, I, i think i'll take this question and towards my end of the presentation i will take the next set of questions okay Now, uh, Arjun, uh, see how does a plane work? Is so uh, this is a plane, and these are the propellers. Okay. Now, uh, this is a simple propeller. Okay. By spinning this propeller, uh, the plane will generate thrust, and because of the lift generated by the wings, eventually the uh, plane will fly up. Now, you have to understand for the plane to move forward, uh, the wind has to be, the wind should be pushing. Pushed back, right? Or it has to suck something. So the Newton's third law says every action has equal and opposite reaction. The faster the propellers spin in front of the aircraft, okay, more air is pushed backwards. And since the propellers are attached to the aircraft, it pushes forward higher. So more spinning, more thrust, more thrust, more lift generated. Okay. right and what happens is so now you have these kinds of aircraft then you have something called as brushless motors which is attached in the top of the aircraft or you have the supersonic aircraft where you have the engine and you have something called as duct engines okay or the uh, what you call as you get a kind of a chamber where the entire air is pulled from the front of it and it is heated because of the uh, at a very high temperature and it is thrown from a very small nozzle towards the end of the engine okay in this entire process the air the cold air which is consumed okay at a very low speed heated so when you heat air the air expands okay and it is pushed out from a very small area so the force in which the air is taken in and the force in which the air is pushed out of the engine is a huge huge difference and because of this huge difference there is a various amount of thrust which is being generated and this thrust followed by the lift generated by the wings 
is what creates a flight okay i think i answered my answered his question rightly okay okay i get a thumbs up thanks <laughs> okay uh, now shall we go back uh, to the slide yeah now uh, okay how do i okay now uh, this is it now we were here now how uh, the design evolved okay we are talking about the Wright brothers now we are talking about the aircraft which can which can even launch a spacecraft in the air now the earlier aircrafts were all made up of wood okay till now the biggest aircraft okay i repeat again the biggest aircraft ever made okay was made by the wood okay and uh, this is the image that you see here okay is actually the biggest aircraft uh, the name of it is called uh, swan uh, uh, okay i'll tell the name okay so this aircraft is the biggest aircraft which was uh, ever made okay till now okay even the highest the biggest aircraft which is antinov is smaller when compared to this it is actually a sea plane okay they were running short of space okay it is called a spruce goose okay it's called as a spruce goose so if you can search in the internet you will get more details about it so these were powered by eight engines i repeat again this was powered by eight engines and even these spruce goose which is the highest or the biggest uh, ever made seaplane could not gain too much of height but it only flew couple of minutes couple of minutes on above the surface of the water okay and that was enough the parameters towards uh, attaining a flight was enough so it was the first and even now the biggest aircraft which was completely made by wood i repeat again spruce goose the plane which you are seeing now was completely made by wood okay and uh, was still the highest or the biggest aircraft which has been designed till now okay and uh, you could ask why exactly this is still not been used okay because of the energy efficiency okay it was not efficient enough for us to use the plane to in general purposes now after wood we move to a second uh, type of a material called as steel steel was still heavier then we came up with something called as aluminium aluminium was lighter and it was very good but we wanted even more lighter then we went to the composite materials now uh, there are advantages and disadvantages when we start talking about composite materials now uh, because aluminium has longer surface area and the contact surface area the communication could have been set very easily okay when it comes to uh, the uh, aluminium so for example if you have to communicate from the ground area to the surface area it is very easy for a plane which is built by aluminium to communicate because the signals get accumulated easily but if you use the composite materials okay like that you are seeing uh, in the any aircraft the composite materials doesn't allow the in signals to enter the aircraft so you it is very difficult for the person sitting in the aircraft to communicate or to navigate or to even interact with the ground base so com no matter what the front portion or the what we call uh, this portion okay if this entire thing is a plane usually this portion of the aircraft we call as the nose cap or the leading edge of the aircraft usually is made by aluminium or even if it is made by composite any composite material it has been riveted so much with aluminium bolts such a way that the conductivity or the interactive uh, surface could have been established okay so that is one thing now this next is how exactly is the approach or the uh, what exactly are the parameters which goes behind uh, making of the aircraft now if you see this these are the sets of the set or the linear approach which goes behind making of an aircraft first is the selection of an aircraft second selection of a design okay now before the selection of aircraft selection of a design 
the concept of design and the technical design are the two major aspects probably uh, if i say selection of an aircraft could have been various things you can get inspired by an existing aircraft and you want to emphasize it for example you take uh, the airbus uh, 737 or the boeing so boeing is 737 okay or airbus okay you want to emphasize it or you want to expand it so you take an existing aircraft and you work on it and you come up with it or you select a design which can be an existing design from any of the old designers okay and then you start with making one of the aircraft but no you want to have a different concept you see a bird okay you get inspired for example you see a kingfisher bird which is extremely agile extremely quick very easily maneuver it can dive down dive up gain super speed and the efficiency of that bird is very high so you, if you want to make a plane okay very similar to that of a kingfisher then then you talk about the concept of the design okay which is called as the biomimicking right or if you want to build an aircraft which is very slow flight okay which is extremely energy efficient then you look for a similar kind of a bird which is a condor or which is an eagle or which is a kite or a pariah kite or a brahmini kite or a golden eagle these kinds of birds and concept design a concept okay now concept uh, designing of the concept can be very simple and very easy you take a quick paper and pencil you say that okay this will be the wingspan area this will be the body length and this will be the tail end so this is nothing but the concept of design of the aircraft followed by the technical design so when you say of the technical design technical design is most mathematical based okay so wherein you start giving the numbers to the concept okay you say okay this is the wing area this is the cord length okay and i will be giving a certain uh, aerofoil when i say aerofoil the top surface of the wing is actually curved to, when compared to the bottom surface and most of the bottom surface are usually flat okay or it will be somewhat like in this shape in the wing shape it is neither square or rectangular or uniform in shape the leading edge of the aircraft okay if i show here if you see the cross section of this okay the leading edge is thin and as you go up the can i have a wing can have a different wing okay the leading edge of the aircraft is thin and as you go towards the center there will be a quite bulge and as you go towards the end of the wing there is a tapering now this methods or this for example things which makes you design this are the one which is called as the technical designs okay or the materials that you use the combination of conceptual design and technical design is what makes a detailed design now yes can i have this okay now if you see this okay in this aircraft the leading edge this is the leading edge of the aircraft this is very thin and as you come up in the center this is where the biggest cord is the is high okay the maximum this is the maximum thickness of the wing and as you come towards the end the thickness of the wing reduces and if you look at the area also towards this or if i give if i ask one more aircraft okay if i talk about this aircraft okay this is a tapered aircraft okay it's called as a tapered wing aircraft now if you look at the cross section of these wings also okay the leading edge is very thin and as you come up the there is a maximum height which is achieved in the wing and as you move towards the end of the aircraft okay the tapered wing becomes narrower and narrower okay so and as i go back what should be the fuselage length okay when compared to the wing what should be the fuselage length now if you see this is a different type of a plane okay which has different structure okay this is a different plane okay this is a different plane it's a biplane this is a monoplane okay and even in monoplane you have something called as this is a mid wing where the wings are mounted in the center of the aircraft and this is one more plane where the wings are mounted below the aircraft 
okay this is a mid wing then this is a low wing got it so these are the various things uh, i think one student is raising hand again and again question request for mic access can we give them the mic access i think uh, vara should be the one who should sure we can do that okay so yeah jahan you can talk jahan yes sir thank you for anything so uh, i wanted to ask so uh, in uh, today's planes is it uh, so we can't to, hear uh, you travel bro. or it is so now am i audible jahan jahan i can hear you why don't you go ahead and ask a question i can repeat it yes i wanted to ask in a plane it is so unsafe to travel or uh, these are uh, normal only that sir told the static energy is generated and all uh, jahan it is actually very safe to travel in an aircraft than walking on the road okay, okay. sir and no, sir, in a normal plane mm -hmm. uh, like in today's plane uh, we can uh, straight away fly up not a no uh, normal passenger plane a fighter plane we can like straight like a rocket go up but in older planes uh, could we go up a little bit also okay now what happens is there are different types of planes okay what in aircrafts one is a fixed wing aircraft so the wings uh, the commercial aircraft that is the indigo or airliner or any airliner have something called as the fixed wing aircraft which has a wings okay which need to travel on a particular on a runway at a particular speed to gain lift okay where has if you see your helicopters or if you see your modern uh, war machines they have something called as rotor jets which spin which has a propeller which is fixed on the top of it very similar to that of your drone okay so which spins at a very fast speed and which generates lift from wherever it is okay so you are talking about uh, one is a fixed wing aircraft and one is a rotor wing aircraft both are two different types of aircraft and both work in a two different principle okay so the usage of the one aircraft and the usage of the other aircraft are two different uh, two completely different okay so uh, the usage the design of the aircraft goes on the usage of it okay that comes in the selection of design right jahan sir i am have... yes rakshit sir uh, when I, whenever i go in a plane i normally notice some flaps on the uh, side of the wings what is the use of those flaps okay there are called as the extended flaps okay which helps in maneuvering for example if i have to go straight okay then i just keep the uh, vertical stabilizer straight and the horizontal stabilizer straight so if i have to move up if i have to move the plane up i will extend the uh, elevators up i will move the elevators up okay as they move the elevators up the plane Uh, the hind side of the plane goes down, and because of the angle of incidence, the plane up. Got it? And the opposite reaction. If I move this down, the hind of the plane goes up, and the plane comes down. And to move the plane left and right, okay? If I move the rudder, which is attached to the vertical stabilizer, if I move the rudder to my left, okay, to my right, the hind side of the plane is pushed to the, my left, and this the plane goes right. And the opposite. is this now this motion is called as the up and down motion of the aircraft is called as the pitching motion of the aircraft the left and right motion of the aircraft is called as the yaw motion of the aircraft now if i have to turn around and roll how will i do that that is achieved because of the elevators uh, sorry because of the ailerons on the primary wing got it so the first motion is left right that is called as the yaw motion the second motion is called as the up down motion it is called as the pitching motion and the third motion is called as the roll so for example if i have to turn 
the complete plane back uh, make it take a u turn or take a circle or do some acrobats or take a sudden climb or sudden descent you can't use only the two control surfaces which is the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer you need to have multiple other control surfaces okay whether you have flaps stats okay slats so elevators ailerons so you have various control surfaces which makes the plane maneuver and which is very easy for the plane to be controlled or move in a given air space okay i think rakshit is asking for the request of mike again so i'm not asking about those flaps i'm asking about the flaps in the main wings which are normally see when the plane is uh, dis- okay so now what happens is during the descent of the aircraft okay you need a high, longer wing surface okay to generate more lift and once the plane is high above you don't need so much of a wing area okay to reduce to generate lift so what happens is there is an uh, option where the wing gets extended back okay so the wing area is increased and this combination of wing area and the combination of tail wing both combine okay this also moves up and this also moves up a little combination of these two and the extension of the wing area was what what generates lift okay okay so for example if you take this plane for that matter okay this has one control surface this has one more control surface and this if you see this is also having one more control surface okay this is ailerons this is elevator and this is rudder okay the combination of these three is what gives you more uh, control actions or more maneuvering capabilities okay so which makes it more uh, sturdy or which makes it more easy for the flight or it gives you more control area or more degree of freedoms okay so as you keep adding more and more uh, control surfaces the more and more degree of freedom can be attained very easily okay now uh, next question yes aditya Uh, so i had a doubt that how much time does it take for the uh, tests like all the tests uh, the like for the plane okay uh, to give you a simple example uh, tejas do you know the tejas aircraft which has been the which is the indigenous aircraft uh, of india aditya yes, yeah tejas aircraft took almost 20 years okay to be commissioned right so there are rigorous tests there are rigorous things which happens and during these tests there are various upgradations which keeps coming again and again again and again so and now what happens is it is not just one company which is making one aircraft there are uh, if the entire plane has about 200 parts there are 200 companies which are working on those 200 parts okay so for example if i take boeing or airbus or uh, anything rolls royce will make the engine okay there is one one more company which makes the seats there is one more company which makes the landing gear so every other company will be doing constant testing and constant variation and adaptive or changes in their parts okay so it is a collective effort which is happening now but earlier one company used to do the entire thing they were the one who used to make the landing gear they were the one who used to work on the control surfaces they used to one which work on the communications they used to work on the interiors so earlier it was quite challenging okay to launch a plane with testing but now it is very easy so that is the simple case example which i can give you aditya okay okay can i continue perfect so now uh, this approach is actually the linear approach which we take so the first is the selection of the aircraft followed by selection of the design now these two can vary okay these two is not necessary that we have to have in the uh, lineage of the design but concept of design and technical design is where the key parameter starts the combination of the concept of design and technical design what results in detailed design of the aircraft 
I repeat again, the concept of design and the technical design is what results in the detailed design of the aircraft. Followed by the detailed design of the aircraft then goes for the testing. Now, the testing can be wing test, load test and various other tests. Okay. Then comes the prototype of the aircraft. Now, in this stage, in the prototyping of the aircraft, if there is some problem, the, you can again go back to the concept of design. Okay. Till you come to the prototype, you can again go back to the concept of design, then again generate the technical design, then do a detailed design, then do a testing, then again do a prototype. But once the prototyping is 100% done, then you move to something called as fabrication of the entire aircraft and then comes the flight testing. Now, the key point of why I was giving all this lecture to you guys where you, for example, you might not be an aeronautical engineer or you might not move into it. But how you guys can contribute towards this is in fabrication of the aircraft. Now, when I come with a prototyping of a design, okay, I will not directly jump and make a huge aircraft. I repeat again, for example, if I come up with a design saying that I can carry 10,000 students at one go and it costs about some crores or some millions of dollars and some crores of rupees, no company will directly invest in me in my prototyping. So what I do is, I do something called as building of the scaled model, something like this. Okay. So what we do based on the prototyping, we build the entire plane. It can be a fighter aircraft or it can be a simple aircraft or it can be a average or a mid-sized aircraft. So you build the complete aircraft. Then you do all the required testings. Now, to make all these aircrafts, okay, you have all the materials in your ATL, okay, and simple, you can just go download uh, any of the designs, okay, you can just type how to make a glider, okay, copy that entire glider, cut and draw the complete design of the aircrafts, okay, and then, uh, just a second, Aditya, can you put one of the glider uh, uh, drawing? in this okay so uh, i'll show you so what you get is if you just type google and if you just say drawings of the gliders or drawing of an rc model or drawing of a control line or grinding of gliders or making of a gliders you get tons and tons of free uh, glider making uh, materials and uh, uh, things okay it can be the blueprint of it or it can be anything okay so using this you guys can use all the materials and tools and build the aircrafts. So once you build the aircraft, now you, what you have to do is make it more lighter. Now, if you see this aircraft, okay, you have multiple ribs, right? Now, these are called as full length multiple ribs. But if you look at the aircraft, which is here, the ribs are spaced quite widely. Can you see that? Okay, but technically there is a rib from here to here, here and here. But why can't we see this ribs is because this is called as the false ribs. Okay, these false ribs eliminates the weight. So we remove this rib portion from here to here, from here and here and here and reduce the weight. And even in the fuselage also and even the tail wing also, if you see, there are multiple holes which has been punched out on all the surfaces to reduce the weight. Okay. And this can be easily and very easily achieved. Okay. So you get, no, I'm not able to see the, the okay. So, uh, so what you can do is you can just simply go type uh, the gliders or making of a glider. Okay. And simply, uh, uh, I will, I will do that. Okay. Okay. I think he added it now. Yeah. Can you see this? No, right. Uh, can you see this changes? Hello. Varya? Varya? Yeah, I can see them. 
Okay, fine. So, uh, so if you see this, so you will get what exactly is the chord length and what exactly is the top surface and what exactly is the bottom surface. So this is what I was talking about. On the earlier uh, talk, I was telling you have a pointed uh, leading edge and the tapered trailing edge. And towards the mid of the wing, there is a highest thickness and gradually reduces. This is called as the aerofoil. So you get the top view, you get the front view, and you get the side view. And you get all dimensions. This is the very simplest of the simplest glider. Okay. By making this, okay, you can start with your aero model. I repeat again, by starting with this, you can start making your models. Then what you do? Start flying it. How do I fly? How do I fly? I do a proper balancing. Okay. After proper balancing, I use certain materials or I, with the help of hand, I do launch the aircraft. Okay. Then looking at the distance, which is traveling. Okay. Can I slowly start reducing the weight of the aircraft and make it travel more distant, faster, and even longer is the second task. So step-by-step -step process of these is what takes you in attaining this. Okay. So to go to flight testing, fabrication is the first method and aero modeling is one of the way of achieving the fabrication of the real aircrafts. Got it. So what I insist is very simple. Just go to Google type design or blueprint of a glider okay or blueprint of a simple aircraft or it can be an rc model so you have all the materials in your atl okay don't always stick to drones or don't always stick to rotor based aircrafts okay you have first start with the simple fixed wing aircraft using this fixed wing aircraft now slowly scale up scale up scale up start with non powered then go to powered, then go to slow flight model, then go to high speed model, then go to rotary. So this is the linear step-by-step -step approach of attaining the aero modeling or start with the aviation or the aircraft designing. Got it? Then you will understand the materials what to be used. Then you will understand the power of the gliders. Then you will understand the thrust of the engines. Then you will understand what pitch of the propeller that used to be used. And you will understand how much of a flying time a fully charged battery will be giving. So all these things, all these things can be achieved at your ATL labs. Got it? Yeah. So saying this, saying this, I will end my session. Okay. If you need any more information, so I am very much available uh, in the website called as younginnovators.in, okay? You can drop a message or a mail. I would be very happy to uh, clarify any doubts or help you guys with uh, whatever you guys are doing or planning to achieve uh, in your ATL labs, okay? Saying this, I will hand over to Varya for any questions or queries. No, I think we are good. We've already gone over time. I think the students really enjoyed the session. Okay, I'd love to have you back for a follow up soon. Okay, um, and for all the participants who joined in, if you have any further questions, you can reach out to Sir, write to him, um, or you can write to us and we can forward your questions to him. And I hope to see you all, um, now on the next to next Sunday morning again for the next Knowledge Hub session. Thank you for joining in. Okay. And if you have any requests, um for sessions that you'd like to see those are also welcome please do send in um and have a good